Ah, history. These are two very old speakers, which I have owned for a very long time. I think I saved these uh, out of an old CRT TV from perhaps the 70s or 80s, which was on the scrap heap when I was maybe 13 years old, and I've had them ever since, being 20-something now, and uh, they've basically been in continuous use ever since, because they, they frankly have some of the nicest sound signatures I've uh, ever heard for speech and stuff. They are, nothing I've ever had has come close to just these uh, guys' general performance in everything. They're just uh, fantastic, in my opinion. Uh, they do have some battle scars. Uh, but the first time I took them apart, I accidentally jabbed a screwdriver through the surround of this one. And I glued it back then, and uh, today when I took them out of service to check them up, I noted that it had cracked again. So I've put some new sturdier glue on there, which uh, should hold up quite well. It's some rubbery stuff. Uh, th these drivers are some really nice looking Ardax brand. They are relatively well known in Europe. They made a lot of old TV speakers but uh, also a lot of uh, hi-fi speakers. Many of the audio file speakers of the era used Ardax drivers. So these are generally very well regarded so I'm not at all surprised that they sound good. The frequency response is uh, not too great. They go down to and well, they actually do go down to well below 100 hertz, probably something like 70 before rolling off completely, but uh, they do a very good job down there. The only issue with them, and the reason I've taken them uh, aside for the moment, is that uh, uh, these cabinets, uh, while they are of uh, good quality, they are plastic and they have a bit of a resonance issue to them. And uh, I've noticed that this is a slight issue when I use them with VoIP stuff, which is probably about half of their uh, general use. But uh, it shouldn't be very difficult to remedy that issue, because uh, it seems as if a baffle can be removed. So I figured I'd just take them apart and add a brace right across here and line the walls with some kind of heavy damping material. So we'll see how that goes. On, on another note, I do love the way these look. I mean, they are just black monoliths with a very nice black metal grill. It's a real shame that they have these TV mounting slots on the side, because if these were just flat black all over, they would just look so amazing. And the specification, curiously, they are upside down when the tweeter faces up. What are the specs? <laughs> V320 loudsprecher. Her music power 30 watts, rated power 15 watts. Made in Finland. Berkele. And 4 ohm. Rated. So these probably came from some Miss Salora or Finlux TV back in the day. Anyway, let's try and get the baffle off of this one. Oh, there we go, it just took uh, a small amount of violence as is uh, the norm with finished products and inside here yeah, it's quite obvious that we might have some resonance issues. But uh, before we get on to that, just have a look at this uh, uh, this filter. I mean, just look at it, we've got coil, two caps and two resistors in a TV speaker. I mean, this is just amazing, and everything connected with connectors, so you can take everything out. We've got labelled silk screen, so you don't even have to mark it. This is just beautiful. I mean, to imagine getting something like this in a modern TV is just preposterous, no matter how much you pay for it. So, we definitely need to make DV some justice hand fix that issue. And by employing high-tech tooling such as a rusty handsaw and a manual file, I've now constructed these two. They're just uh, old uh, particle boards, and they slide 
upon these two screw tracks into roughly the centre of a box. So it doesn't make a difference. say that they certainly seem to. So I've just got to goop these in to make them not flop around. I'm going to use just some car sound proofing gunk and then we'll be ready to put everything back together. Oh, there we go, one generous gunking later and everything's installed save for the damping cloth and It's made a world of a difference. It's almost starting to sound like the assembled unit, despite being taken apart. So now I've just got to <laughs> do the messy job of getting that thing back in, and then maybe we can have a listen. Well, this does look more like something which would be classified as an international disaster than a speaker box, but. I think it's going to be effective. Alright, so everything is back together, one of the speakers, and for a small semi-scientific test I've set them up to play, one at a time, a 140 hertz tone, which is roughly the troublesome area. And right now we're listening to the uh, good one, and if I put my hand on it, it's vibrating very slightly, so let's see how it's performing. about 0.8% THD. So let's just swap to the unfixed one. That were at about 1.1%, so that's a roughly half reduction in distortion at 140 Hz by doing this modification. And uh, that, that, the THD isn't the main factor I'm looking for improvement in. Uh, the main issue is the resonances in it. Well, when uh, there's a noise it takes some time for it to decay when you've got a box that just kind of keeps on going. And that's what this is going to remedy. But <laughs> we we are seeing a half reduction in distortion anyway, which is definitely a good thing. I played some music too, which probably won't come up properly on the camera microphone, but uh, they do sound remarkably different right now. I don't think there's a chance in hell this is going to show up properly, but we'll give it a go. I'm playing a very short amount of 100 hertz, then silence, so you try to make out the difference. This is the unfixed one. Moving to a fixed one. I'm back. The unfixed one just kind of resonates and it just doesn't sound quite as good. I can't be bothered to properly measure the uh, decay time of them, but uh, hopefully you get the idea. So, now to do that one and we'll be properly back on the road. Now that's box number two. Learned a couple of lessons from the first one. Number one being that it's a lot easier to put the white stuff in before the brace. The second to tape these connectors because they get covered in crap. And the third, you don't even need to remove the woof in order to remove the baffle. Since everything's just nicely connected together as a unit. Pretty sweet. So now I've just got to wait for these to dry and Tomorrow I'll probably be back in business. And here's why I think the resonance thing is causing me so much grief. This is how the speakers are installed. That's my computer monitor right there. So the woofers and tweeters are aiming up against the wall and they're basically most of the usable sound is being reflected from there. 
but since I've got my monitor very highly mounted, I have basically the side of the box, which has been, say, resonancy, coming straight at me. So any sound coming through there is going to overpower any sound coming from up there somewhere. Because these speakers, uh, prior to installing them like this, they haven't really had any uh, too noticeable performance issues. So I've got really high hopes for this, because aside from these resonance issues, which really just cause issues with uh, certain voices, uh, UXW Bill's voice comes to, to mind, because uh, he's got this, usually speakers, just the right frequency to make these resonating scream at me. So, with this I think I should be able to start enjoying his videos once again. Oh, there we go, just a couple of hours of drying later, have a black model of so back on the road. I just adopt the way these pickers look honestly. Just pure black boxes. And we really have manage the resonance issue because there's just no movement left on the side whatsoever. And before you could just put your hand at any volume, any sound you could feel how the side was just flexing. It's just not doing that anymore, so I'm in very high hopes for this. Right, so speakers are back in place and all hooked up. We should have some audio coming through them. Now, I don't usually listen to the royalty free music on these birds. <laughs> yeah, that giant 100 uh, ish hertz resonance is just gone. Let's see. We do have the tone controls enabled, though, and as you can see, this is the bass on the right, and it's just turned way down. But even if we disable that, it sounds... It sounds really okay. And at the risk of getting sued, let's just see how you dump your bill sounds on it, since I know Th this was a major issue, this was what triggered this entire thing. But Upon a closer examination, the front panel wiring in this computer is actually hooked up, just not all of it. They bothered to put in this fancy dancy drive bay thing and they never hooked it up. Yep, it's better. <laughs> it's better. Oh, that's so much better. And that's even with the tone controls disabled. Oh, wow. What a step up. Fan farm in it. There's one here, one there. There's one oh, fantastic. So now I can actually turn this thing off and I don't need to use it because that's the main reason I've got that extra setup because I don't want to wear the VFD set on this super ultra rare device. Anyway, I hope you found that somewhat enlightening. Thank you for watching. Cheerio. And just for the fun of it, uh, here's uh, the measured frequency response of these speakers uh, at roughly the position of my head. And uh, this actually looks a lot better than I initially thought it would. It ramps up so somewhere around 70 Hz or so, and uh, after that we're more or less flat from something like 100 Hz up to 8 kHz. That's really impressive for what this is. I mean, I, I was not expecting to have much frequency response above perhaps 5k. So th this was actually quite a surprise to say the least. And that's hump at around 200 hertz or so. Now that's quite useful since these are mostly used for speech. Anyway, just thought I'd add that in. Cheerio.